actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Hi, everybody. It is Wednesday, February the 10th. I'm Emerson Collins. And I'm Del Shore. And you're listening to The, the Del, Del and, and Emerson, Emerson Show. Show. Straight talk. Real gay! Yes. Hey, Del Shores. Hello, Emerson Collins. How are you? I feel like I'm not loud enough, John. Am I loud enough? Lord, yes. You're so loud, and I'm not as loud. Well, I'm worried. I feel like I'm worried. I feel like every I am kind of loud in you my head. Very in loud. my headphones. I mean, Lord, I listen to myself talk, but I don't need to hear myself scream do at myself. Like, do you like to hear yourself talk? I mean, do you like your voice? No, I mean, I don't have thoughts one way or the other. I used I, to hate it. I love my voice. I love doing sound checks. I, I love uh, fooling with it. All like making going sense up. now. Yeah, I hate it. It all makes. I sense. I could do a very wide. But that's not your voice. No, that's that's one that's of That's you many. listening to you doing voices. That's one of my voices. But you like listening many. to your natural speaking voice. I do, I do. Well, that's good. Or, you know, a little lower than my natural when I do this. Anyway, I like it. I it's don't fun. hate mine. It's fine. I like your voice. Well, it's funny. We, you know, we've talked about this before. My, I, I sort of tend to, we literally before the show started, I tend to camp up on the radio show and the people's couch and things because, let's be honest, it's a whole lot easier to land a joke. Yes. In a number of the accents available to us. And let's be honest. As Southern gay men. They hired you for a reason. Right? <laughs> it wasn't for your your big butch masculine energy. But right? so but my serious self sits a little uh closer to the middle, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just don't experience it that often. Uh, well, I think I think you're doing I I'm, I saw the people's couch again this week. I am hooked, so hooked. Uh, I loved it. It did make me laugh for those of you who saw it. I when I ranted at Scott about the, his wedding. Oh, yes. It was yes. so funny because when that happened while we were doing it, it just makes me laugh because he's wonderful and delightful, but he jokes all the time about how he's got his funeral plans already, you know, the, the order of service. And so we were joking about, you know, the wedding day and all of that. And it's your day. You get to do whatever you want. But so the comment was about, you know, what if they wanted to not walk down the aisle? And I, that's, and I went into that rant of like, nope, if we have suffered through a year <laughs> of smiling and nodding and yes and planning and putting it all together exactly the way you wanted it, well, you're going to walk down that aisle. I think what happens, though, when, when people start planning their wedding is they forget that there will be another person involved right. at some point that might weigh in and have, you know, well, no, I don't want that. Well, I feel like it often works the best when somebody's real passionate about it and the other one is the yes dear. Okay, yeah, well, you know, someone's got to censor You Light Up My Life by Debbie Boone. Someone has to. Oh, that's <laughs> specific. Well, we're going to kick off the show today out of order with What's Gay in Sports Ball. You know, it's so funny that you said that because I was putting the pages back together because I was, I was order. kind of running them in the Rite Aid line. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh, no, this is wrong. But what is gay in sports? Well, it was a big sports ball. Even so much. In, yeah. I mean, the big giant Super Bowl sports ball extravaganza. I, you know, I had to watch it this morning on YouTube. The half uh, I like to call it the intermission. Well, I, uh, heard, <laughs> I tweeted the entire thing. As Super Bowl the musical. So I said, I'm only watching the overture and the on -tract. I enjoyed it, though. I really had a good time. I, I, I actually spent the Super Bowl at uh, the theater watching Sean Hayes on stage. Nice. And he, he was That's, wonderful. That is appropriate. Very few people there. Well, there I mean, like, it is a big American. And yeah. also, even for people that don't particularly love sports, by, sports ball like me... There's still a lot of things associated with it that are kind of fun. Did you love the the intermission? Well, let's start at the beginning. <laughs> okay. Well, with, the, uh, well, with Lady? Lady Gaga and Marley Matlin. It was, uh, I, well, whatever, with Marley Matlin. I just loved Lady Gaga. <laughs> I could not hear Marley Matlin. I stop. <laughs> I thought it was crazy that they made this huge announcement that Oscar winner Marley Matlin was going to do the ASL along with the Star Spangled Banner, and they showed her for like 2.3 seconds. It's wrong. I was like, if y'all want an do Oscar, that, God damn it. And she's going to show up and do, and also, it's <laughs> because when people sign to songs, they tend to do it with more ography of the yes. arms to reflect the musical taste. So I'm sure she had thought out her whole performance. They could have put no, her in a bubble down just, in the corner. I th I would have liked her to have had a matching outfit with Lady, with Lady Gaga. That, I think that much. would have been... <laughs> that is too much. Because that... There we are. No, it's not. Lady I liked Gaga's her tasteful little bedazzled collar. Did, did Ms. You? Matlin. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. And I will say for Lady Gaga, I have two giant pet peeves with the Star Spangled Banner. It's a weird. It comes from my dad being a music minister. One, when the Amer the Star Spangled Banner is written in three. Oh, say can you see when giant performers 
all the time they put it in four, and that makes me crazy just because it's easier to breathe. Uh huh. And the other thing is when people change the melody. No, like it is a bit. It is the song of our country. Sing the notes the way they are written. This is not your music. So did you, you like her? Do her? No. And I did. She made like uh, only a two or three minor changes towards the end. But I have to say, it was maybe. It might be my favorite since, like, the great Whitney Houston winning it for all time. Well, that Whitney, I mean, that that, that was the craziest ever. I thought Lady Gaga giving her legit vocal, giving I, you big round tones. This was like, I am a singress. Yeah, it was just like, I don't even, I mean, I never need to watch the game, but after that Whitney one, that was like, I just walked out and I said, I'm done. I don't need to see anything else. <laughs> but I can't even remember who did it the last couple of years. I mean, I remember Christina forgetting the words. And trying too hard, but this yeah, this was a really great yeah, vocal that, for me. It, I loved she it. She continues to uh, prove that she is just more than Let's Dance. Yes, yeah. I mean, oh, absolutely. It, it's it's been a, a great ride for her this year. She's Golden had a Globe this year. really good year. Be singing at the Oscars, I would presume. I mean, she is well on her way to being like I am a force to be reckoned with in all aspects of yeah. the entertainment industry. And I liked all three at ha- at the halftime. I loved Bruno. I mean, it was more his show than anybody. I disagree. I'm. W- w- <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> well, time wise, it certainly was. Yeah, but that becomes unimportant. Like the amount of time. I mean, for one, it was phenomenal, and that song's great. But I'm not really understanding the trash bag leather Missy Elliott costumes they chose to wear for it but like it was cute that they were all there but it was Beyonce's halftime show it was like hey you she guys just, like, I just stole the show all over again and then I love when they met I mean it was it was it was good it was good I did appreciate it was funny because you know people got all upset that they were like oh my gosh it was like a homo halftime because somebody let Chris Martin let somebody brush the sweat off his forehead with a rainbow flag and there was like multicolored believe and in the love drums the and there was there was lots of but uh, you know if they want their rainbow back which they keep saying we want our rainbow back well give give them their fucking rainbow back and don't say that it's the gays now reclaim it and don't say it's ours but it's nobody a- said this is gay but I also thought it was interesting because I thought it was a very specifically universal ultimately love message because it wasn't like they did straight up the gay pride flag across the audience or anything it's like I felt like people were almost reaching I think it was a, a universal I, message I do too and uh, you know but but hey we'll take it if but, you want to <laughs> give it but, to us because it's important in my life obviously let's talk about Beyonce say for a minute okay okay that new video you watched the video yes okay it was released on saturday afternoon and i was not doing anything important and saw it arrive on twitter like 15 minutes after the vi- after the video had been released i promptly watched it three times in a row yeah walked out of my apartment and heard somebody playing it in the apartment upstairs walked up there and waved in met one of my neighbors because i was like that's what i was doing and he laughed and we made friends then i walked down the stairs and heard somebody drive past my house with it blaring from the car the song had been out for all of 30 minutes it was hello all over again. Well, it really was. It really was. I mean, seriously, that, that same thing happened when, hello, it was like you could walk down, I was in New York when it came out and I was walking out, oh, it's coming out of the Starbucks. Oh, it's everywhere. Well, and it was, and it was interesting because it demonstrates the power and influence of her on pop culture that she can release the song on a Saturday afternoon and it be the thing that was talked about from the Super Bowl performance the next day. But what I found really interesting and what has been a lot of the big response is Beyonce's always had a perfectly cr- crafted public image and performance and message in her work. She doesn't do a lot of interviews because she doesn't have to. She can just say no. And this video and this song were very, very specifically far more political than she's ever been, Mm -hmm. all the way down to the Black Panther reference of the dancer costumes at the Super Bowl. And she included Big Freedia in the song, which is uh, part of the rap that you hear in the background, who is a huge uh, queer icon in the bounce music out of New Orleans. And so there's been it's been really fascinating to watch the reaction online of the demonstration and response to her really stating very positive political things related to Black Lives Matter and related specifically to celebrating black women and all of her embracing all of her history and including somebody that Mm -hmm. is very representative of queer people of color, you know, because we, our perspective is white gay men. Right. That's where we come from. And then for black women, but this, she included somebody that really connects for people that are parts of both of those communities. And I thought it was really impressive to see her use the enormous worldwide influence that she has to make a, a rather 
strong political statement in her work. Well, they called, uh, you know, we called on her, everybody called on her for the hero ordinance earlier, yeah. uh, and, and it was silence. And so maybe maybe it's time, that, and maybe she, who knows? Who knows what's going on? I think she just has so much fucking money, she doesn't give a shit anymore. She says, I'm going to say what I want, and I'm going to, you know, it, it, at, one time, at some point... You know, what's there to lose, really? Yeah, well, and part of the benefit of gaining that world stage and that world power is the ability to use it uh, when you want to, how you want to. And this was a really strong message. And people have talked a lot about how she and Jay-Z spend a lot of money behind the scenes. You know, they've mm -hmm. built things in Houston. They donate to movements without like making a big thing with their name attached to it. But I think it's really exciting to see her actually using the art that propelled her to this icon status to make statements really relevant to the community she comes from and to also speak to the audience uh, that that participates. And with how her. fabulous is she? Just just the visual. And also, <laughs> can we just... talk about that Beyonce nearly fell I, in her performance? I didn't know and this. I keep knocking yes, you again. Keep... Dell is just determined to kick my face off. I think this I show. should go over here. The come on, kids. Come she on. had a moment where she dropped to her knees and then she sort of took a hop step back. And then jumped right back up. But like this is how crazy the fan base is sometimes that it was that the response was basically Be Beyonce didn't nearly fall. This was just proof that like gravity doesn't apply to Beyonce. <laughs> it was amazing. I, I, I don't know. I just got tickled because for some reason I just thought of this meme that hit my page right after the Super Bowl with Janet Jackson crying, said, Yo, everybody forgot about my titty. I did I did see that as well. <laughs> and yes, and yes, Janet, they have. They have forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> that titty titty gate is over. <laughs> it's done. Long gone. Well, I found uh so I all in all like I loved, you know, people joked about Coldplay sort of being the guest ar artist, but I think it's really generous of them to include all of that and to sort of celebrate and Chris clearly was happy sharing the stage and it seemed mm. like they were all celebrating very different perspectives on music. Um and I loved it. Yeah, he seems to be such a good person. I, I won't go into detail because it's not on our. We got to move on, but, but he also, did I, some really nice things for a kid that 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 passed. And you know, yeah, yeah. And a lot of the commercials I didn't really watch as much this year as I do sometimes. But I did love that Mini Clubman did a car commercial using a bunch of different kinds of people representing lots of different point of view, reversing stereotypes. And so, uh, soccer star Abby Wambach. Uh, s stood in front of the car and said, this is a gay car, in quotes, joking about, like, your car is what you want it to be. But I thought that was a cool piece of inclusion. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, all right well, let's well, move on to our equality, equality update, update. Which lately is basically just, here's what's happening in politics lately. Yeah, let's see. Do you watch any of the primary end stuff last night? Who Who am I? <laughs> I know, but I thought I'd provide. It's, well, I, I couldn't wait to get in front of that couch and 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 watch and by the time i got there because it was it was rather early when they just declared the winners yeah. it was so fast uh bernie was speaking and and then you know trump started blowing hot air and it was it was kind of done and yeah and i just watched the real housewives of beverly hills and, Good. and went on with my life the well it was really interesting one it was exciting to see uh hillary has made it a point in these speeches lately to really really uh include in her list of issues, LGBT issues and LGBT mm -hmm. rights. She continues to speak about it and speak about it more often and more strongly. Bernie mentioned it last night under, too, yes. under gay rights. It's like we do need to shift like whoever's in their camp. It does need to not, you know, it needs to include the whole community. It's not that much harder to say LGBT rights, like include everybody. Because frankly, the rights that we're fighting for significantly speak to the trans community is most vulnerable. So let's not uh, make the gay umbrella. Uh, but on the other side, it was interesting because Marco Rubio catastrophically collapsed under the, uh, oh, I was going to say the weight, and I didn't even mean it that way. Uh, under of uh, Chris uh, Christie's uh, weight. Yes, but, uh, <laughs> but under the he attack. He handed him his ass of is Chris what Christie. happened. And it, I just, I cannot stand Marco Rubio, even though he is the most handsome of the bunch. I just want to take those big ears and just yank them and just scream at him in his face. I cannot stand him, and I was so happy to see Christy go at him that strong and with that much fervor and with that much clarity. It was like he he was befuddled. He said the same thing over and over again, and he, he lost badly last night. I mean, he well, slipped. But it was an interesting, though, because it becomes a like, okay, so yay, because what happened last night, Trump won by a lot. By Kasich a lot. came in second, but he basically only ran in New Hampshire, and he will not continue no, through he the won't. next set of primaries. So then we're left with it was Cruz, Bush, Rubio. So 
we're gonna it's yeah, but they were like, way down there yes but i mean yes. We're, so what we're looking at like we're needing to find the like reasonable alternative to trump and cruz christie did come up though no he's done he said today oh he's done uh-huh because he did get eight percent and yeah, rubio only got like there, nine or ten like, 172 days in the last year, and he oh. was uh, below five. So yeah. he's out. He's Carly done. dropped out today, that. too. Well, I'm uh, that was just so sad to see her go. But I just mean that, it's like, a, we're getting to the point where Rubio and Bush are the only, like, more towards reasonable alternatives to Ted Cruz and Donald Trump. Well, uh, uh, when you look at it, what, uh, I mean, Cruz truly is so hated by many. I just think that if he gets the nom, I just oh god, I don't know. It's going to get real interesting. That's all I have to say. Yes. It's going to get real interesting with Bernie on the rise, with Hillary just clawing, trying to stay, and with these fucking Republicans. We'll just see what happens. On the Democratic side, South Carolina will be very telling because uh, there is significant perspective that Bernie does not have the inroads, particularly mm -hmm. with the uh, African American community, no. that will be necessary there. So that may be very revealing. And then we've got March first. That's with with super. Tuesday. That's right. going to be huge. Uh, but Marco had a very interesting conversation in New Hampshire leading up to the primary that was sort of revelatory regarding his pretension uh, his opinion on us. There was a New Hampshire voter named Timothy Kirstead who confronted him at a diner. He asked, why do you want to put me back in the closet? Which Rubio replied, you can live any way you want. Kirstead had told the senator his position amounted to saying that we don't matter. And Rubio said, no, I just believe marriage is between one man and one woman. And Kirstead said, well, that's your belief, as Rubio continued to say. I think that's what the law should be. And if you don't agree, you should have the law changed by the legislature. Legislature. Well, Mr. Kirstead pointed out that the law had already been changed, yeah, both by, by the Supreme Court decision and by state legislation, actually, in New Hampshire. And Rubio said, I respect your view and walked away, to which Kirstead yelled, typical politician, walk away. Yeah, well, it, it, here's a, here's what I feel about Rubio. If he doesn't have that memorized speech, if he doesn't have those cue cards in front of him, he is really thrown for a loop. And that's why when I witnessed this, when I watched this back, it felt like to me he just got thrown just for a second. Because, I mean, to, to state, well, you know, I think that's what the law should be, and, and if you don't agree, you should have the law changed. Well, that's just ignorance, or that's just fast. I said it fast, and, oh, God, I wish I had that that's, back. I want to, well, it's, I mean, we've to get out done, of this We've all done that, yeah. you know. He did. He wasn't expecting it, and good for this man. Who? What? Didn't it say that he was? He's been married. He has, or he has. He is married. And he has three children. Is yeah. That, did you say that? Yes. And then, but the other great part, because I found this hilarious, uh, that was a coda. Apparently, some ninety-two-year-old woman asked Marco Rubio about Lindsey Graham, asks, asking, "He's a bachelor, right?" Which Marco said yes, and she asked, "Is he gay?" To which Marco replied, "No." I was like, Love "Oh, ninety-two-year-old woman in New Hampshire. He's a bachelor, right?" Is he gay? <laughs> well, <laughs> ma'am, why do you want to know? You know, in her day, those confirmed bachelors, you that, know, that meant like my uncle Jewel uh -huh. was a confirmed bachelor. It would have been better think, if she'd mm. ended it with, is he light in the loafers? That yeah. would seem more appropriate to her day. Like those ladies on y'all show. I love them so much. The, the glamours. The glamours. They're great. So, all right, well, let's move on. We've got in New York, we've got the banning of confirmed. Conversion, conversion therapy uh, insurance coverage. Um, Governor Andrew Cuomo announced that uh, New York State will bar health insurance coverage on therapy aimed at changing the sexual or gender orientation of young people. He said, Conversion therapy is a hateful and fundamentally flawed practice that is counter to everything this state, state stands for. We will not allow the misguided and the intolerant to punish LGBT young people for simply being who they are. Uh, this would bar pr private and public health insurers from paying for coverage of a conversion therapy to a person under the age of 18, nor will the state's Medicaid program cover it. Yay. So that's exciting. Yes, New York uh, moving in that direction. Absolutely. Then a weird thing happened in Michigan this past week. Now, to, I want to set the stage correctly. Michigan has been trying to pass a series of laws related to uh, keeping pets out of the hands of animal, animal abusers. Mm -hmm. So it's a series of bills called Logan's Law. But in order to do it, they're trying to update language that already exists because it's easier to pass than creating all new legislation. Well, the problem is that Michigan, like a number of other states, their uh, laws against sodomy and their laws against animal abuse and bestiality are tied together. So they just passed a bill that essentially reconfirms sodomy as a felony punishable by 15 years in jail. Now, it doesn't actually mean that anybody can be prosecuted under it, but I just find it interesting that it was easier to do that 
than to try to just Write something impact new. the uh, the actual animal law. The GOP Senator Rick Jones was asked about amending it to remove the sodomy portion, and he said, the minute I cross that line and I start talking about other stuff, I won't even get another hearing. It'll be done. You'd get both sides screaming, and you end up with a big fight that's not needed because it's unconstitutional. Well, it, so it's not in support of it, but it's just that's sort of embarrassing that well, you yes, had to reaffirm it. And it's also it also bans oral sex, right? Mm -hmm. That I mean, it's like they've just like decided that everybody should be felons. Well, and it's not anti-LGBT. So it's not specifically no. same sex. It's like from the olden timey days where it's like you can't put it in anywhere but the hole that God said you're supposed to put it in. Well. That's the front. That's your south mouth. We're, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's your north mouth and your south mouth. <laughs> I've never heard that ever. Since. Really? <laughs> no. You're welcome. <laughs> Something new. All right, let's flash through the gay news. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, fi oh, we got some good news. That bitch, Catherine Knott, was sentenced. Uh, Y'all remember Catherine Knott? Uh, she was the one of a group of 15 people who attacked a same-sex uh, couple in downtown Philly. I believe this was last year. Yeah. And uh, she... Uh, unlike some of them, said, you know, we'll plea this out. And uh, she said, no, 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 I'm going to go to trial. And she was sentenced to five to ten months in jail. She was found non -guilt not guilty of more serious aggravated assault charges and not guilty of charges uh, against the other victim, which is why there was such a light sentence. But, hey, she ain't going to have fun for five right. to ten months. Yeah. I think I'm going to go visit her. Uh, well, that seems just, like a lot of work. It's well, maybe if I'm there, I could just go and pick up that phone I don't know and just th go ha 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 ha. Somehow, I don't feel like Miss <laughs> Catherine is going to put you on her approved visitor list. I, I'll see what I can do. I'm Del Shores. To call him and say, uh, <laughs> "Excuse I'm me, Del hey, Shores." Girl, hey. You they are go, who? The Del you have to say the. I am the Del Shores. There. That's how people know you're famous. Is where you're the the somebody. or the official. Uh -huh. I am the official uh -huh. Del Shores. Yes. And they're like, but I don't think that the prison guards and those people are my demographic. I don't maybe think many of them will. I don't know. So maybe that who one, knows? That one lesbian will go, I know who he is. Yes. <laughs> That's <laughs> we're getting very silly, or I am. Okay, moving on. All right. Uh, so we've talked a lot uh, over the last couple of months about the. What, what do we call it? The exemptions that colleges and universities that are supported by a religious institution can get to the Title IX education amendments uh, that oppose discrimination. And that a number of religious schools and institutions have applied for those wa waivers, and far more in the last two years, as sexual orientation and gender identity have been more included in Title IX cases. Well, this past week, LGBT students and alumni rallied outside of Biola University here in California and Oklahoma Baptist University to protest both of those schools' requests to receive a waiver of LGBT-inclusive non-discrimination protections. Basically, they said, please stop applying for the right to discriminate against people like us. And so it's the beginning of a movement uh, started by LGBT faith and social justice group Soul Force. They plan to do more demonstrations like this at other schools, I believe, that are uh, that have applied for similar waivers. They use the hashtag GiveBackIX, which is nine, ti like Title IX, GiveBackIX, uh, demanding Christian campuses be held accountable and creating unsafe learning environments. They stated the goal of the campaign is to convince the religious schools to nullify the waiver requests and ensure total compliance with Title IX's protections from sex-based discrimination. Mm -hmm. It's great that they're bringing attention to it. It's sort of the Oklahoma Baptist University kids that wasn't even made public that this waiver was applied for, and that group was actually smaller, and they didn't take photos because they were worried about reprisals from the administration. So these are really strong statements from LGBT students and alumni of these great. universities about wanting to protect current LGBT students uh, that are people of faith and choose to attend faith-based institutions, saying, please stop asking for special permission mm -hmm. to discriminate against us. Good. Good, Which good, is great. good. Yes. So, going going in the right direction in a lot of places. Absolutely. A, you know, I, I love reading the stories like this where people just say, I'm not going to take this quietly anymore. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, because we talk about a lot of faith and sexuality, and I think that this, that statistic we have that half of LGBT people uh, subscribe to some faith of one kind or another, mm -hmm. and that these kids want to be able to be a part of institutions and fighting to change the dogma uh, from within the institutions and within the religions is a really powerful tool and statement and should certainly be applauded. I have faith in traffic. Because you got to uh, have faith, the faith, the faith. Just, you know, 
John, it always exists. Traffic exists. I have faith in it. It's going to be there tomorrow. Well, we've got some porn news. Porn philanthropy. Yes, I love this. And uh, it has just made me so happy that I actually use Pornhub. Because Pornhub, in honor of World uh, Whale Day on February 13th, the, this is the Internet's largest free site, has launched a fundraising campaign to preserve the endangered marine mammal. The site is donating one cent for... Every 2,000 video views between February 9th and February 28th. And all donated funds will go to towards a nonprofit organization, MoClips. Is that uh, Cetological? Cetological Society. Sure. Uh, right. I was going to say Cetological, but yeah. set, Cetological. A, preser- a pr- preservation group serving whales, and uh, including sperm whales, and other uh, species such as dolphins and porpoises. Last year, Pornhub, this is very impressive to me, first First of all, 88 billion views. One billion of those were me. Uh, suggesting the three-week period should net the Moclips uh, uh, Cetological Society approximately... Because th- you think one penny for 2000 not much money. No, $36,000 they predict that they're going yes. to be donating during this time. Uh, Corey Price, VP of Pornhub, announced the campaign saying, we're now asking our community to turn their attention to and help save a different type of blowhole. Uh, <laughs> one that belongs to a majestic species that's once swelled in numbers. He's so funny. Throughout the oceans before commercial industries initiated their demise. It's part of uh, the site's uh, philanthropic... Uh, uh, Philanthropic? Philanthropic arm. I've got to to rehearse this better. It just shows how painfully ignorant I am at times. Pornhub. I can say Pornhub, though. Uh, Cares, including previous campaigns, Save the Boobs. I can say that. For breast cancer awareness. And Save the Balls for testicular uh, cancer awareness. And Give America Wood, that's my favorite one, a campaign designed to promote awareness and interest in Arbor Day. <laughs> that's my favorite because, you know, they just picked Arbor Day because just there was a because. wood metaphor. Because let's be honest, Arbor Day is the punchline I use for, like, all the random holidays. Like, it's, don't forget Arbor Day. Like, When what, is it? I don't have no idea. And what does anybody do on it? It's like well, you're supposed to hug a tree on Earth Day, not on Arbor get, Day. You get wood. You get wood. Like you they were wood. like, let's give, let's figure out some tree organization we can donate to because we got a great slogan for I it. I just kind of love this story though. It, it made me. Yes. It made me happy. It made me. I'm not ashamed anymore. I'm going to Pornhub a lot. And also, every time, so every time you watch a video, you are giving one two thousandth of one cent. To but, save the whales. But it adds up, y'all. It does. It adds up. So if you visit 2,000, if you watch 2,000 videos in that three-week period, you contributed a cent, a penny. All right. Well, let's move on to dildos. <laughs> um, well, you didn't have any more sperm whale jokes? Blow no. your load for the blowholes? I feel like they must have the best time just making memes and things for this. Like, what can we give to? We should make a meme. A meme for, for Pornhub. Por- I feel like they've got people they've that can got handle it that. Since I'm it's literally an internet share. site, I feel yeah. like they're, they've probably got that covered in... Something. All right. Well, All right, flashing on. Uh, so there is a new set of Star Wars The Force Awakens branded pool toys, and one parent is a little upset about what they look like. Is that up there? All right. Uh, Miss Joni wrote Target and said, are we sure these are children's choice? Target looks a little questionable to me. Well, Target responded. And she bought four. Saying, <laughs> we apologize for your disappointment. Occasionally, we carry merchandise that some guests may find objectionable, as was your experience. We never want to offend anyone and have shared this with our merchandise team for review. Thanks from Stacy at Target. Now, here's the thing. Wait, can you put that back up there? Uh... <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're sort of phallic shape adjacent, but like at this point, I feel like if you're seeing it there, like you may need to take care of your personal needs or find somebody to help you with that because that starts to get to the point where literally every shampoo bottle, pump, mousse, gel, like anything starts to look like it could be an adult toy. But on the upside, you know, parents can get their kids to bed and then borrow their toys. <laughs> it's a pool toy. I don't know that all the it's been in the pool with all that chlorine water and everything. That that's, Oh, you just rinse it off. I think it might need a little more than just a water rinse. Just a, you just purell it. You don't want to be uh, ma- that. Maybe that. Uh, but I just thought, well, uh, stop looking at it that way. All right. Well, let's move on. Uh, Russell uh, Tovey is back in the news, and uh, he was uh, last week. It was reported that a male patron seated on stage during this performance of "The View uh, from the Bridge" on Broadway passed out. 
passed fucking out when Russell took off his shirt in the play. They called for a doctor in the house and three patrons helped him until EMTs arrived. Uh, David Catchell, I love that he came public. The, the man who passed out tweeted Toby apologizing, saying, sorry for disrupting the show tonight. I'm feeling better now. You were great. In a new uh, interview with Heat magazine, Toby said, on behalf, of, on behalf of my arms and nipples, I feel the need to publicly apologize for the effects felt by one of our audience members on a dark one tonight in New York City. I love everything about this story. Yeah, First of all, too. I understand. There's certain people that if you didn't realize they were about to take the clothes off, you might gay gasp a few too many times and suddenly all the blood rushed to your head and you, out you go. Hey, when I saw Boy from Oz years ago with Hugh Jackman on third row just right there, I almost passed out and he didn't even remove any clothes. Well, think about how many gasps and pass outs might be likely at Take Me Out, that big old locker I room I saw scene. that one too, yeah. People, people trying to buy those front row seats and... <laughs> oh, 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 and suddenly down they go. Isn't just it funny timber. How- People start advising you where to purchase. When there's nudity, they go, get the seats over to the left. Like You'll people sit. used to do with Southern Baptist Sissies. That's true. They if did. you sat all the way at that very, very edge wall, you, you might, might get a little flash of Ted Datweiler's penis. Or Tate Taylor. Before he directed the help, you might have seen it. Uh, but I loved it. And also, I thought it was hilarious that Russell was such a good sport about it uh, with him, which shows a great sense of humor, apologizing on behalf of my nipples. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to apologize on behalf of my nipples. Well, Considering all the ridiculous things we ask people to apologize for lately, that seems uh, delightfully amusing. Yes. All right, moving on. All right, on to something uh, extremely so uh, serious. We talked last year in November about the massive changes the Mormon Church has made uh, to the issue of LGBT family members that when they changed the policy declaring gay Mormons in same-sex marriages to be apostates in risk of excommunication and deciding that the children of same-sex couples could not be blessed or baptized until they turned 18 and only if they renounced their parents' marriage. Well, Mark Joseph Stern at Slate uh, did an interview with a woman, Wendy Montgomery, one of the co-founders of an organization called Mama Dragons. They connect with other mothers of gay Mormons in the real world and through Facebook. The group's members have sheltered gay Mormons fleeing their homophobic families, invited to LGBT LGBT Mormons into their homes when they feel depressed or suicidal, and they invite gay-friendly speakers to address Mormon communities and even help to plan funerals on behalf of Mormon moms whose gay children commit suicide. And she reported that through her personal anecdotal experience of mothers and family members who have come forward to talk to her, that they count more than 32 young LGBT Mormons who have committed suicide Mm -hmm. since early November. There aren't uh, definitive statistics, and certainly there's a lot of anonymity, excuse me, related to that because of the problem that this causes for family members of LGBT people in the Mormon church that seems like they're sort of trying to keep them away, keep them from making relationships in order to keep it from being acceptable to church members uh, as well. But that's a very eye-opening number when you think about how many people that impacts and how quickly this decision has caused extreme strife for LGBT people with either Mormon family members or who grew up in the Mormon church. Uh, but also huge applause to these women for creating Absolutely. a network uh, for the parents. Mama Dragon. It's sort yes. of like Mormon P flag. Yeah, I uh, love a little it. bit, and the- I love it because you know, I mean, we, you and I are both so passionate about this. I mean, we made a movie about it, and I wrote the play Southern Baptist Sissies. But yeah, years and years ago, I, before P- Prayers for Bobby was a movie, I remember that reading that book and thinking how horrible it is for so many people of faith when their kid kills themselves because of what they ta- told them not to be. Yeah. And, you know, the, 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 the great thing about Mary Griffin in that, that book was that she redefined her faith, but it took the death of her son to do it. And it's just, the, the, that book, if, if you didn't read that book and just saw the movie, go get that book, because it has all of Bobby's journal. That's what she found. She found his journal. So she she suddenly realized what internal strife her son was going through. And it's just brilliantly executed. So Well, and um, it's a very stark reminder, you know, where we're in an age where we're coming up on the one year anniversary of the marriage equality decision. We have Democratic candidates talking about the Equality Act in Congress and for talking about our rights and it's on our national stage and permeates our media and entertainment. Mm-hmm. But then in families and communities that are 
their entire life has been built around a very specific kind of dogmatic religion. Everyone and everything you know is tied to that. So as much as it may seem to all of us that there's so many more examples, there's so much more to see for people inside those worlds and communities that clearly still seems so far away and so far removed and something yes. that they that they will not be able to get to. And these are the kind of results we see because of that. Absolutely. So in more in here, this is another church story news. And I really love this story. Actually, I'd love you to help me with it because I've just thought it. As I was reading it over, I thought, you know, Emerson uh, should play Amy. I would she love did. to. So I would like to be the, the, the mother who wrote Dear Amy this letter. Dear Amy, we are part of a church group, and I fear that if people in that group find out that they would make fun of me for having a gay child, he won't listen to reason, and he will not stop being gay. I feel as if he is doing this just to get back at me for forgetting his birthday for the past three years. I have a very busy work schedule. Please help make him make the right choice in life by not being gay. He won't listen to me, so maybe he will listen to you. Sign, feeling betrayed. And Amy responds, Dear Betrayed, you could teach your son an important lesson by changing your own sexuality to show him how easy it is. Try it for the next year or so. Stop being a heterosexual to demonstrate to your son that a person's sexuality is a matter of choice to be dictated by one's parents, the parents' church, and social pressure. I assume that my suggestion will evoke a reaction that your sexuality is at the core of who you are. The same is true for your son. He has a right to be accepted by his parents for being exactly who he is. Pressuring your son to change his sexuality is wrong. If you cannot learn to accept him as he is, it might be safest for him to live elsewhere. And then she goes on to tell her about PFLAG. But I love that. But the response was, if you can't do that, somebody will be a better parent to your child than you are. Well, let's just break down that she forgot his birthday three years in a row. I mean, she's so concerned about the gay, but she forgot his birthday three years in a row. She's that, busy. That one hits a little awkward for me. I don't know what it is about birthdays, but I cannot remember them for anybody. Emerson, if you had a child, I promise you, I, yes. you would I mean, remember I assume their the birthday. Child would, but like, more you know. than, like, I got a text at 9 o'clock on my mother's birthday in January from my dad, like, uh, hello. And I, oh, my at, God. At night? Yes. Oh, and no, oh In Texas. <laughs> and I was like, I, there's, because my birthday. You know, you birthday, could set alarms and shit, Emerson. I know, but because mine, because mine is close to Christmas and I, like, don't like doing anything, I don't it's not and a everybody show. forgets it. Well, it's always like a travel day, and so I just I'm uncomfortable with that like stare at you attention. Mm. Like I don't want there's I'm not doing anything. If I don't have a reason for you to be looking at me, I'm uncomfortable. Like I don't do you that thing. the actor who your whole life is about people looking and appreciating your talent and staring at you. You have a problem with all, on that one day. Yes, when I don't have anything to do because it's like y'all all looking at me. But what? Are, yay! I have talked to the participation trophy of life. You didn't die. Happy Guys, birthday. When uh, the, this coming December, no. I'm going to remind everybody no. we're going to we shower Emerson no, with because inappropriate. Because here's the great thing. Horrible attention. Because I don't make my birthday a thing. I don't make anybody else's either. Like, tell me where you want to be. I'll show so up for the drinks. So basically, I think what we're saying here, Emerson, is that you really just created this whole thing about your birthday so you could just be uh, amazingly selfish during the whole year. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. If I just let's, give up let's my... Let's just call it. If I just what? give up my one day, then I don't have to worry about anybody else's you, either. But you've always remembered mine, but I make sure people know about but mine. But it's also... <laughs> it is. Well, and also, like, it, because I see you every day, it's like, oh, That's, we start talking about this what's going to happen because there are other people like they're important people in my life who I'm like it's either this or this so but it, yes clearly with a parent it's different I'm just saying I'm a little guilty in that one alright let's All right, move on alright flashing on I love this story so there's a city employee in Chattanooga Tennessee Sherman Higdon has been an equipment operator in the Chattanooga's emergency office since 2012. He shares a department-issued cell phone with two co-workers who noticed that he would delete the call and text logs after working alone at night until one time, he didn't. Mm. Well, his coworkers found on this cell phone that they all share sexually explicit texts oh. and photos, along with questions about an apparent M for M Craigslist post advertising sexual favors for money. Oh, no. The Internal Audit Office conducted an investigation and found multiple male pornographic images on a department computer. They also tracked his department-issued vehicle and found he had spent several hours during various ships shifts parked in a secluded camping ground parking lot. He said he was talking with friends who, who he said were police officers. He has been placed on leave. Now, first of all, I admire the, ingenu the ingenuity of someone uh, who has realized that, well, I got some downtime at work. He clearly yeah. works some night shifts, and he's like, well, I can take care of some other business while I'm here. But, sir, uh, on that company-issued cell phone that you share with other people. Yeah, that was stupid. 
That was stupid. He he. But yeah, this is you know this is Leslie Jordan's hometown. I bet you he knows about that campground. I'm going to call him and ask him about oh, this. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Leslie, have you heard of a campground where one of the city department people? I sure. What well, I was just there. Out. I was just there. Hang out, make friends, my... <laughs> sir. Yes. You can do that in the off time. Uh, you have at le- you have so many other hours of the day and night. Well, or get yourself a second cell phone. He's sir. been placed on leave. I bet you he's been to one of my shows. I bet he has. I've read or because I've done. <laughs> Or at least Leslie's show. All right, well, let's move on. We've got um, school orders a boy, and uh, this is in California, shocking, to remove his Elsa costume on Disney Day. And this little boy, Ethan Chase, he's in middle school. He had a costume uh, that on Disney Day. He, he was eighth grader. He's not that little. And he dressed as Elsa from Frozen. We've got a picture of him there. And the district superintendent said this action was taken in accordance to, accordance to district policies. At no time was there any indication that the student was expressing any particular message. And the principal's action was based on the need to stop a general disruption uh, to the school environment. He was. They were told that the, the boys should not, he, the principal said he does not believe that boys should be dressed like girls. Um, and Ethan's mother told KTLA, I can't believe that there are still people People out there that hold these beliefs, especially on a day when it was just intended to be good fun, it really shouldn't have been an issue. The boy's not transgender, uh, but it was popular with the other students who all wanted photos with him. I guess that was the big disruption that they yeah. wanted photos. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because the so first silly. part, if the if they hadn't said the principal thing about the principal saying boys shouldn't dress as girls, I can sort of imagine like somebody's costume becoming disruptive to the point of like causing problems I could sort of buy that piece of it but like in the age where like if a little boy wants to be the little mermaid because it's Disney day or a little girl wants mm-hmm. to dress up and be Prince Charming because she likes the cape like who care like I, who I can't even go with you on that because I figure if you're gonna have this in your school it's gonna be a little disruptive that day yes. it's not gonna be your standard day people are gonna go oh my god I love your costume or whatever yeah you know or that costume yeah. sucks you know, yes, and that's just as likely. You know, middle school—they're the. I think middle school is the most ruthless age. My poor mother. She she taught sixth through eighth grade, and when she first started teaching, and she couldn't get out of there fast enough. She yeah. said, "No, no, no, no! I'm not teaching. The, I'm going right into high school." Yeah, I think that is a special kind of calling. Yeah, that I, like beginning of puberty, and everybody's you know just it's all you can do to get your clothes on and get through the school day. I can't imagine the skill and patience it takes for those teachers. Did I ever tell you the story about my mom when the Miss Miss Temple ran next door to my mother's uh, class and she said, "Miss Shores, you have to come help me. You have to come help me. Andres is masturbating. Oh, in, in class, he's masturbating." And my mother said, "Oh, it'll be over in a second. <laughs> oh, I mean, that is definitely probably true. As you wrote in Southern Baptist Sissies, that is that age where you can brush her up against the doorknob and fall in love. By the time you get back, Miss Temple." <laughs> The problem solved. You, that age where you see you like now you know like you see thirteen year old boys walking around with school books in front of them because like I don't know you I brushed up against it. something exactly. and off off we went or I had a thought I had so, a thought. Well, I love that Chase dressed up and I get it. You know they're making yeah, Chase. Frozen into a Broadway musical. So Ethan maybe Chase. he can apply. All right, all right. Flashing on. I really enjoyed this story because it relates to our industry. Sean Valentine is a very in demand stunt coordinator. His credits include Justified and Brooklyn Nine Nine, and he has performed as the stunt double. For for Jack Black and Oswald Patton. Well, he came out in a Facebook post on January. He wrote in depth about the decision to live honestly, and Oswald Patton gone pu- went public with his support by sharing the post on his own Facebook page, calling him Hollywood's first professional stuntman to come out of the closet. Patton added, I could not be prouder of the guy. I'd walk through fire for him, which is fair, considering he's walked through explosions, walls, and on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, a kiddie pool full of tomato sauce. <laughs> and Valentine talked about the struggle and concern of being a stuntman and stunt yeah. coordinator. You think about, you know, the, the martial arts training and the very sort of aggressive energy that can go with being willing to throw yourself through a wall or off a building and uh, and how that can be perceived as a particular kind of masculinity. And that he said that's part of the reason he held back for so long, worried it would affect his work. But he said, if this helps even one or two out there from feeling alone, being blackmailed, or told to your face that someone doesn't approve of your spiritual practices, then I'm here for you, and you have one huge shoulder you can lean on because I've been in your shoes. I love the picture of him. There. You will not go to hell or get stoned to death, which I was told just last week. I didn't choose to be gay. It's simply who I am, and I have been blessed to have fortitude and to not care anymore what everyone 
some things. Good for him. So I love that. And g- g- being a role model, and and I do. Th- I think there are those those professions that it's it's more difficult. You know, it yeah, it's more difficult to because there's uh, well, and I think, home, You know, p- I would think that the police department, fire departments. I think that some where you know extreme masculinity is yes that are associated with a specific yeah. kind of historical masculine stereotype. Yeah. So, all right. Well, we've got Hallmark embracing same-sex Valentines. And there's a couple of commercials on YouTube that I watched and loved. A male couple talks about how they fell in love and the birth of their child. And the female couple, uh, La Paris and Caricia, tell the story of meeting in a club. They're so sweet. And then they open Hallmark cards, and it says, you're my person. So, yay, Hallmark. I loved it. Because yeah. Valentine's, of course, this weekend, or Single Awareness Day, however you are choosing to celebrate well, on Saturday. But Hallmark's one of the giant engines behind the commercialization of the Day of Love. But I love that the cards just simply said, you're my person. I think that's so great. It it allows for anyone and everyone to apply it to whatever they want to, to whomever they want to. I sort of love that sort of universal appeal. I do appeal, too. Uh, from a massive, massive, you know, part of the commercial industry related to the world of love. I'm excited about Valentine's Day because my daughter Carrie's coming into town with her boyfriend, who I've not met Oh, yet. it's going to be so fun! Yes. Uh, I, I, I really love him already because he treats her so well. So anyway. Uh, and then in our checking in with Crazy, we talked last week about the Alley you. Foreigner Center's new campaign uh, to raise $200,000 in seed money to buy David James Manning's At the Church in Harlem. Well, they have passed that $200,000 goal. You can still contribute at AlleyForeignerCenter.org. And obviously that will be uh, related to whether or not the auction goes forward and what happens. And they will need significantly more funds than that to actually make the purchase, but we definitely helped, uh, anyone that contributed helped contribute I, to them having that first round of seed money. I have to say something, though. I tried to go and find where you donate. Do you just donate to the organization, no, or is there a special thing for this specifically? I couldn't find it. It's that thing that we talked about. This is the one of those you don't listen when I No, I moments. heard you last week say that it was difficult to find, and I went all through it, and I just couldn't find it. Yeah. And it kept. It also kept giving me one of those things that said this server, maybe they were getting so many, I don't know. Well, you can just put the word Harlem in on the art out. Alley Forney website, and it will take you to that particular campaign. Okay, good. Campaign. I, I, it's I the do Harlem want, No Hate campaign. I want to give to that. I do. I just, uh, and you know. it's still there. But it's nice so, to see their two hundred thousand dollars thermometer bursting out the it's top. It's so but great. Certainly, any funds, and they have said if they are not able to uh, achieve this particular property, that these funds will obviously go to the incredible they work work they do for LGBT it's homeless so youth wonderful. in New York City. And we've got Franklin Graham back in the news. He's uh, just bashing again. Uh, there's a non discrimination ordinance that uh, was. I guess it was defeated last year and it's back on the boards and he wrote on Facebook this the so-called non-discrimination ordinance was defeated last year in Charlotte but now it's been back brought back to life there's no question this is a dangerous idea this literally opens the doors the bathroom doors to predators and sexually perverted people each section of the proposed ordinance has wording to include gender identity gender identity is what an individual individual feels that when the an is what an individual feels their gender is regardless of their biological reality so any man can say that he feels like a woman that day and enter the women's restroom at any public facility or the showers of public gyms by mandate of the law that's absurd lgbt activists are trying to hook their caboose to the freedom train and drag their immoral agenda into our communities by claiming that this is a civil rights issue civil rights issues are real important And don't be fooled, this is not one of them. I heard one African-American minister say recently that the freedom train does not stop at Sodom and Gomorrah. Could we pause? Because I know there's laughter. But also, (laughs) that is such a good line. It is such such a good line. Okay, I have to say, you know, uh, he goes, I hope Charlotte, let me finish this. I hope Char, I don't know how to say it. Charlottians, I guess. Charlottians by the tens of thousands will show up to uh, be against this. I when I saw that you know in a, a very sordid wedding, which by the way we are ninety one percent funded to go to green light everybody. So thank you all who are listening who have supported our project with just thoughts and investors. But I have all these church signs all through it, and I thought I got 
I got to put that on one of the church signs. It's that, real. That's kind of really great. It's one of those where you get irritated at the other side because I'm like, oh, that is so sm-. Like, you know, that line gets applause every time. Oh. It gets all the amens, hallelujah. Because, I, I mean, I read it and I was like, you know, we get jealous of somebody else turned a phrase and you're like, oh, that is so good. I wish I'd thought of that. Well, but the thing is, what's great about it is that we don't have to create anything. You right. know, when you're stealing, you just go, oh, that I, I, I don't put anything like in a very sorted wedding. I didn't put anything that did not actually happen yeah. out there. Because so, it's like, what do you counter that with? Like the Freedom Train doesn't sell any tickets. Everyone's welcome aboard. <laughs> See, it's hard to compete. It's it's very difficult. I'll keep thinking on it. So, all right. Well, we got to wrap up here. But uh, next week, I will not be here. I am flying to Louisiana and performing at the Always Lounge on Thursday night. And then I'll be going to Corinth, Mississippi after that on Friday night. And I will then be going to Little Rock to perform. And then I'm going to Natchitoches uh, to uh, teach at the university there for a week. And and then perform there as well. I'm going to clean up my show a little bit for that show. Want tickets for your New Orleans show and everything? Where do they go? Just look? go to my Facebook and go under events, and everything is there. Or it's a, you know delshores.tix.com. Everybody, uh, stop on by. It's a little mini tour. Yeah, it's fun. So I'll be here next week with some I don't know some homos of some kind. We'll see who I wrangle in. The gay view. Uh huh. So th- th- that's our show, guys. That's been a fun show for us today. Thank you so much for listening in. Up next is Tony Sweet here on UBN Radio. And then after that is Jasper Cole. And then the delightful, the delicious, the audacious Ann Walker. Y'all have a great week. Bye, y'all. Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe 24 hours of music and talk radio without limits that's why people keep coming back for more that's ubnradio.com